Hello YouTube, Mike Perry here with another rant. Sorry I've been gone for a bit. Um, unfortunately I had some uh, some issues take place. Um, but that's life. But we're going to try to get back into the mix and put some videos out and see how things go. Uh, let me start off with this. Welcome. Devontae Adams to the Raiders. I normally don't do a video on Raider players um, signings or anything like that. Uh, the main reason why I'm even mentioning this is just the idea that we got a really good receiver, number one, but to a degree it ties into one thing that I was gonna talk about or that I will talk about in this video. Uh, and that being that I think Lamar Jackson is gonna be somewhat in the same situation by the end of this uh, football season that if he's not the highest paid quarterback by the Baltimore Ravens, he will be the highest paid quarterback by the Miami Dolphins. So you heard it here first. I don't have no inside knowledge on Lamar Jackson first and foremost. Just a little bit of a uh, premonition on my side of what I think will take place with him. Because um, as far as draft picks go, no one knows what's going to take place with them once they get signed. I mean, we're seeing all kinds of things take place with guys that are going to the pro days and things like that and getting injured. So you never know. Uh, you could get, you know, somewhat of the uh, best so-called pick uh, from all the scouts and all this other stuff. And they end up being, um, unfortunately, a bust. And... Um, um, there's been a time that um, the Raiders picked up a player that I was hoping that would be uh, a long time Raider, but it didn't happen. Uh, but, you know, you move on. But it doesn't matter whether it's a draft pick, uh, free agency signing, or trade. It's going to be up to that player and how they produce and stay consistent when they go to the team. Um, the saying that has been in the Raiders is once a Raider, always a Raider, with one exception, Antonio Brown. You can go watch one of my videos. I call me Antonio Clown. But um, not even a regular season game with all his uh, issues and things of that nature. But I'm not going to bag on him because uh, we're seeing now with different wide receivers getting huge paychecks for their skills. And it's just basically, in my opinion, kind of shows when you have your skills together with your life together and you're playing the game, you can get paid or you can be the clown. We'll see how things pan out as the season goes. Uh, this is going to be my boxing rant, even though I got my Christmas uh, Raider hat on for the uh, Devontae Adams signing. I'm going to talk about... Um, boxing right now some of the fights that took place uh basically in 2021 uh that unfortunately as i said in my uh one of my other previous videos that i was a little bit out of commission that i wasn't producing any videos i'm hoping to change that i'm trying to get back into the mix so please stay tuned to the channel and uh, uh any support would be helpful so we'll really appreciate it um but let me start off with this. I'm gonna talk about some fights that's already been concluded, but I'm just gonna give you my own interpretation of what I feel, uh, I don't wanna say should have been the outcome, but more on the side of like my thoughts of what could have transpired. Um, my first main one is with the Wilder Fury fight. Although this has already been concluded, like I said, Fury got the best of Wilder, beat him in, um, in their uh, latest fight. I do hope that Wilder does take some time off, just recoup, you know, recharge the batteries, but come back. You are a 100% a uh, number one, if not number two, heavyweight fighter out there. Um, I think that once this break is uh, over with, if that is uh, not 
a true retirement that you take this break and come back, you'll be back on top after a few fights. So my best to you and your family, but um, I do hope, uh, I mean, as a fan, I'm sorry. I do hope that you come back and start dominating the heavyweight uh, division again. But uh, my thought is that although this fight had has many um, delays, the COVID delay was the one that I feel gave Fury that little bit of a uh, breather and reduced that rage that Wilder had at the time. And in my opinion, if that fight would have been, if that fight would have took place at that scheduled time before the so-called COVID incident, you would have seen a very different outcome. Like give Hagler and Sugar Ray a rematch outcome. Like there's not going to be a, you know, oh, he's getting up type of thing. Nope, that's it. He's going down for the count. And that would have been a wrap. But um, in a lot of big businesses, when you have an irate customer, the supervisor or manager is not going to talk to them immediately at that time. They're going to try to get some space between the time that they're outraged and to the time that they talk to someone. So that way they can reduce that rage, possibly get that person to come down and have a little bit less of a uh, negative reaction. But again, more on the side of being a uh, calmer individual over a raging individual. But I look to have seen, oh, I'm sorry, I would like to have seen Wilder and Fury fight if, I mean, obviously that is not gonna take possible, that's not gonna be possible, but I would, if that fight would have taken place at that particular time, hands down, I call Wilder winning that one. Now, another fight that I was uh, very interested in and was a little bit discouraged after the fact was the Porter Crawford fight. Now, 100% Crawford gets his, his respect for winning that fight. He did his due diligence, he trained, won the fight. Can't can't take any credibility away from him on that. The only issue that I have is the idea that Porter, unfortunately, didn't train the same way he trained for Errol Spence. Uh, that has been proven by his comments as well as what his father has stated in the ring of that his son wasn't prepared for Terrence Crawford. And I understand, I mean, Sean Porter is the person in the ring. So he has to get all the uh, credibility for what he states as far as like who we felt is the better fighter. But I look at it on a more of a simpler level of if you study for a test and you study your butt off and you get a 95, 97, then you go take a similar test that is possibly just as hard maybe even harder and you study less why would you expect to get a better grade i mean it's one thing to try out new things but at the same time if what you did almost got you to win why would you do less to fight someone that might be better so that's where i feel like i don't i i just can't give terence crawford the full credit of uh being a top welterweight at this time 100 percent, he's a great welterweight currently um i would like to see him fight someone that's hungry like some of the new guys that are coming up in the division but at the same time i can't pass that torch to him being number one with errol spence fighting so many welterweights prior to um facing a Sean Porter, um, like I said, he's just been doing so many different, uh, he has so many different fights with different welterweights that I just can't give him that credibility just yet. So I'll still put Crawford at number two, but that's 100% a, you know, 
coin flip in some other people's eyes. So we'll see how things go. Um, I do have to say this though. The only way that I can see those two fighting, I'm sorry. The only way I can see Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford fighting is if Crawford was to fight him at 154. And even at that point in time, it's going to feel like a little bit of a um, edge to a degree in Spence's side because Spence is going up to 154. Um, that's his weight class, to be honest, right now. So, and Chance Crawford moving up. I mean, if his skills are what they are, it still should be a great fight. Uh, it's just unfortunate that they couldn't meet up at 147 uh, before the... Uh, difference in weight uh, was just too great for uh for the two which leads me into brooks and con brooks is a 154 160 fighter i'm gonna just call it like, like i like i see it him fighting terrence crawford at 147 was that's not his weight class I mean, even though he uh, participated in the fight, looked like he was uh, in good shape for it. He he's just it's not him. Like when he fought at 150, 40, when he when he fought at 147, he really could have been fighting at 154. And then he moved up to 154, but he can really fight at 160. So he has a um, a weight issue, which is why he looked better when he fought Khan at 150. I think they had the the catch weight at over 147 and he it just doesn't make sense for him to, to to fight at that that weight class at 147 i'm talking about uh, but we'll see how he, he he continues at 154 if he still keeps fighting which i think he is um i would like to see errol spence face him at 154 Let's see those two guys um kind of go head up again at that weight class i think that'll be a good treat but as far as khan goes khan should think about either going down to 140 or if he's going to take on fighters from this point on at 147 he's going to be similar to what sean porter was reluctant to want to be which i think he should be is a gatekeeper at that weight class i think both fighters can get fights easily they can become the top draw for those fights um, in the sense of Mayweather, um, A-side, um, as the, the, the more known name, but I think that the, the 147 is a very, uh, like that's his max weight for Khan. And unfortunately, if, uh, he's not gonna be able to take punches, there's going to be selective fighters that he can face and dominate, or at least compete with if they're not strong punchers, um, but I think that his skills are there to, to be a gatekeeper. And I would probably be able to compete as much if you're going to stay in the game. Otherwise, uh, go the route of what I believe he was doing, uh, promoting fights overseas and just be a promoter from that point on. And then as far as uh, everything else, um, I hope that uh, the current state of the issue that's taking place in Russia and Ukraine, um, I hope that stops. I mean, other than just a flat out, just cease fire, just, 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 there's enough that's been going around in the last two years. You know, um, I don't know any of the politics on it, I'll be honest, but I just, I, I mean, if we can't have world peace, let's just have peace. So please think about that. Um, I want to start doing my own little series on different odds and ends. But uh, hopefully I can stay consistent with doing this. And I um, uh, hope you guys like the channel. All right. So you guys take care. Be well. Be safe. And uh, always remember. Go Raiders!